Hey, it's me. You know, a lot of people, when they start connecting with God or seeking absolute truth, think they're going to get some amazing proof, so to speak, that will erase all their doubts. Honestly, I haven't seen it work that way. We often want this kind of proof because we believe it's going to eliminate our uncertainties. And that's totally understandable, right? It's totally understandable to have doubts and want that kind of proof to make them go away. But that kind of proof, proof won't make them go away. Doubt is the opposite of faith. And faith really is just being certain about things that might fill you with doubt right now it's an inner experience you can't get that inner experience from things that happen outside of you so we're talking two different levels here to make real changes inside you need to prepare yourself internally by finding and overcoming inner blocks and obstacles basically everything that stands in the way of true faith Let's say you did get the proof you're hoping for, but you haven't dealt with your inner barriers yet. Sure, you'd probably be impressed at first. You might think, wow, that's incredible. But after a while, those doubts would inevitably creep back in. You might start thinking, maybe it was just a coincidence or perhaps someone knew about it beforehand. If outer events aren't backed up by inner conviction, even the most amazing experiences will fade over time. The outer and inner levels can't replace each other. They have to grow together through steady inner development. Experiencing absolute truth is like nurturing a living thing. It needs care and time to grow. It won't come to you through some miraculous event at least not commonly. So just like physical growth happens slowly, step by step, spiritual and emotional growth is the same. You might not notice it happening until one day you realize how much you've developed. You might not notice it happening until, you know, it becomes obvious in hindsight. Quick fixes are not going to last. They usually aren't real. They might seem effective at first, but they don't bring lasting change. Slow growth, on the other hand, aligns with divine principles and ultimately leads to true success. So it's important to remember that you can't achieve the kind of faith that we're talking about through a single astounding experience. Instead, you build faith by working on yourself spiritually, walking the path, toward higher self, getting to know who you really are, understanding your inner conflicts, and recognizing how you might have, even just emotionally, gone against spiritual or natural laws. As you gradually free yourself from your inner chains, your doubts will lessen over time. They're not going to vanish overnight, but maybe they occur less frequently and with less intensity until over time they do disappear altogether. I believe that's the way. I think it applies to not just those starting out on this path, it also applies to those who are already on it. Even as you grow, doubts still pop up, maybe less often and with less impact, but they still do pop up. So for those times, I want to offer some options, some ideas on how to deal with doubt. We all have two forces within us. Let's call one the higher self, that part of you that strives upwards, seeking objective truth and integration of all your parts. It's that part of you that knows the greater truth that your conscious mind might doubt and wants to share this knowledge with you. And let's call the other part lower self, which includes your faults, weaknesses, ignorance, and the attitudes that lead you to consciously or unconsciously break divine laws. This part fears the certainty of the spiritual world because knowing the truth brings responsibility. 
Sometimes we prefer to stay ignorant to avoid the hard work of overcoming our lower selves. Yet, there's also a part of us that yearns for spiritual truth because it leads to eternal happiness and bliss. But our lower self tries to make us doubt this and doubt this desire to avoid disappointment. So these two parts are in conflict, really. When you feel inner turmoil, it's usually because they're at war. When doubt resurfaces, it's your lower self talking. When doubt fades, your higher self is speaking. Then you recognize that God and the spiritual world are the ultimate truth, where anything is possible and unhappiness does not exist. When the lower self is stronger, you might believe that doubt and hopelessness are the real truth. So at this point, <clears throat> you need to decide which side is right. When you're in doubt, take some time in stillness, some quiet time. Think about the issue clearly and ask God which is true. Stay open for the answer. It might not come immediately, but if you keep the question in mind, you will receive an answer in some way. Because the answer is already within you, even if you don't realize it yet. So notice how you feel. When you're in doubt, do you feel depressed? Do you feel heavy? Do you feel sad? And when you're experiencing truth, how do you feel? Do you feel lighter? Do you feel happy? Truth always brings happiness, even if it's unpleasant at first. Many of us have faced unflattering truths about ourselves, but when the desire for truth is stronger than anything else, even unpleasant truths can bring strength and happiness. On the other hand, untruths, no matter how pleasant they seem, don't give you real peace because deep down your higher self knows the truth. So if you're not satisfied with your inner voice, seek help from source. Again, ask, which is true? I'm ready to receive your answer. Because I promise if you stay open and patient, the truth will be shown to you and you'll know which side within you is right for you. Once you've overcome your inner obstacles and are mature enough to stay in the state of truth, proofs you wanted will come to you abundantly. However, their purpose won't be to convince you or overcome your doubts. Instead, they'll be wonderful confirmations of your inner victory. When you no longer need proofs, you'll receive them freely. They'll make you happy, but they won't be the reason you believe. This is deep wisdom and aligns with divine law. Now, another piece that I wanted to bring up, because I think it relates to what we're talking about, yet is often misunderstood, is positive thinking. Positive thinking is important for spiritual growth, but I see it often being misapplied. Building clean, proper thoughts according to divine law is important. It's fundamental. Our thoughts are real. They have form and substance. Negative thoughts create disharmonious, disharmonious forms that eventually affect our lives. This isn't just about conscious thoughts, but also emotional reactions and subconscious thoughts. The problem is that people who are spiritually and emotionally immature, let's say, tend to push uncomfortable things into their subconscious, where they then do more harm than any conscious thought, even the worst ones. When things are conscious, we can deal with them. But when they're buried in the subconscious, they fester like a time bomb. Negative forms build up just as destructively from subconscious thoughts. So people who focus too much on positive thinking sometimes make things worse by suppressing negative thoughts into their subconscious. They're so worried about not having negative thoughts that they ignore the gap between what they want to think and what they actually feel. It's important to understand that while you can control your thoughts through willpower, 
you can't control your feelings. Like, you might know it's wrong to hate, but if you feel hatred, you can't just force it away. That's what you feel. Similarly, you can't force yourself to love someone if you don't love them. These changes happen indirectly over time as you grow spiritually. One way to facilitate this change is by bringing your subconscious feelings into your conscious awareness. Some approaches to positive thinking try to make you convince yourself of something that's only surface level and doesn't have deep, root, deep roots though. And that leads to living a lie. Even if well-intentioned, it's still harmful. So it's crucial to face what's actually inside you. If you're too focused on positive thinking, you might ignore unpleasant aspects of yourself, locking them away where they can do more damage. So yes, absolutely practice positive thinking. Do so mindfully at all. Observe your thoughts calmly and without guilt. Notice when your emotions don't align with your thoughts or how you'd like to feel. Accept that your lower self exists right now. It's temporary and how long it lasts depends on you. You can't ignore any part of your reality. Another misunderstanding of a positive thinking is that everyone wants to be happy, which of course is natural. Both your higher self and lower self want happiness, but only the higher self knows there's a price to pay. Effort on the path of self-knowledge, overcoming faults, learning and applying spiritual laws, and so on. The lower self wants happiness without the effort of conquering itself. It wants to be perfect without doing the necessary work. If you're facing difficulties, you probably know they stem from your lower nature and from breaking divine laws in some way. Mature people are willing to accept the consequences as a way of honoring God. They don't try to avoid paying the price, so to speak. Misapplied positive thinking, however, tries to achieve outer perfection too quickly just by controlling one's thoughts, but that's not enough. True positive thinking starts with accepting the consequences of your past actions, whether from this life or a previous one, and saying, I've gone against spiritual law and I need to work through the effects. I have to accept the consequences in this life. We often see people trying hard to practice positive thinking and sometimes their desire for happiness comes from their lower self. So they might get upset with God or fate when they face hardship. Intellectually, you might accept that you're responsible for your difficulties but emotionally, you might not accept it if you're unwilling to pay. And paying simply means accepting your difficulties, knowing they're temporary, and understanding that God wants all God's children to be happy. Happiness comes from consciously accepting the laws of cause and effect, not from trying to escape them through thought control. You won't find happiness if you love yourself so much that you can't bear a little pain. By accepting pain, you can detach from your ego. And eventually, pain won't be necessary for your growth. It doesn't mean that you should become hopeless or wallow in your troubles. It means rather recognizing that every difficulty is self-inflicted. So you need to go through it. Bear it, accept it, and most importantly, find its cause within you to eliminate it. The cause can only be found through self-knowledge. Find the fault within you that's responsible for your hardships and work to eliminate it. Knowing that the external issues won't disappear immediately, but will dissolve over time through gradual growth. While this process unfolds, honor God's laws by accepting them. Don't cling so tightly to your own comfort that you avoid a little pain. Face it courageously and humbly without making your own comfort the most important thing. This is the true and best way to practice positive thinking. With this attitude, you'll develop a deep conviction 
that God's world is a happy one where you have nothing to fear and so much to look forward to. Your sense of time will change, not just intellectually, but as a deep intuition that tells you how short your pain really is from a spiritual perspective. You've probably heard that your difficulties aren't as important as, you, as how you handle them. He who wants to save his life will lose it, but he who loses his life for my sake will find it. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you're so afraid of a little pain, holding tightly to your ego and sensitivity, you're actually losing out. By clinging too tightly, you can't find peace, harmony, or happiness. On the other hand, if you don't take yourself too seriously, if you don't make your own comfort and ego the most important things, if you're willing to show your true feelings without worrying about being hurt, then you'll truly find life. You'll find harmony within by aligning with the divine laws and will gain the love and respect from others that you couldn't have by holding on so tightly to yourself. So, on the spiritual path anyway, it's crucial to learn to lose your life in the sense, which includes being able to accept pain. Misunderstood positive thinking often ignores this whole aspect of spiritual development. And I don't want that to happen to you. So I just wanted to share those thoughts because I think they may deeply resonate with where you are right now. I love you. Let's connect soon.